This is uh, two more from, from Aaron Jacob. Um, I was conversing with my Jewish cousin who was at his temple for Hanukkah, and I was approached by two of my friends who were both older men. They told me that my Jewish soul could be one of the six million who died in the Holocaust and said that we need men like you to revive those six million who were taken from us. Is this a common uh, belief or rare? What do you think of this idea? Um, Kabbalah is um, full of this concept of um, different transmigrations for the same soul. The Arizal writes, generally it's a known concept that in general there are only 600,000 general souls of the Jews. These are the same souls that left Egypt and heard the, the Ten Commandments, the, you know, according to one opinion, the first two of the Ten Commandments, and were basically in the desert. Um, now, a soul can be broken down into different pieces, which is why we can we always have more than usually we have more than six hundred thousand Jews. Um, in this generation, it's believed that we're you know that just the last you know one one soul that would be in the desert could be broken down to hundreds of people. Um, we're just like sparks of sparks of, of whole souls. That's why our our ability to learn is much less than it used to be in the days of the Talmud. Our ability to to have fine character traits. We're just lesser people. This is a, a general Jewish belief. As we get further from the giving of the Torah, our our Abilities, our capabilities are, are going down. New, um, with the same, you know, by the same token, however, you know, the generation of the Messianic Redemption, which, according to um, Elisa Lautrab, this was it. Although his his predecessor, seven generations ago, the Ultra has said that uh, he hears the footsteps of Mashiach, so they've always been tuned into the fact that this could be the last generation. Um, we will certainly have special um, capabilities, well, not just regular people, but but even uh, of super super extra uh, souls, um, but this this idea of transmigration, if you accept Kabbalah, then it's it's for sure that we're um, we've all been here before many times, and uh, the altar of rights in Tanya reason a soul could be here. You know, every soul. His opinion is that I think, and he quotes the Arizal, is that every soul has to complete all six hundred thirteen of the commandments. So many of the commandments were were temple based. So you had to do the, the commandments that only a Kohen could do, or only a Levi, Levite can do, or an Israelite can do. And he said at this point, what we could be down here for exclusively is to, um, to elucidate Torah further, to come up with a new Chiddush, a new, a new thought, a new concept in the realm of Torah. And he was very big on, on everyone learning Torah, not only learning, but, but delving into what aspect of Torah they found most interesting, most intriguing, and, and bringing out further points that haven't been brought out previously. He didn't shy away from studying. Um, I think he knew he knew how to make a calendar. I think he studied um, astrology um, uh, or astronomy. Sorry, one of these, one of these, um, and geometry also. He knew he was he was very smart, and um, that was his his belief. Um, so yeah, and I, I personally do 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 uh, believe. I know someone. I have a friend who believes. Yeah, all of us are are in one way. The people whose lives were cut short in the Holocaust. We're there, you know, we, we grew up, the ones in America anyway, in general, in a much more open and free environment where we're free to be Jewish. And there's really nothing hindering us, um, except for our own mental um, blockages. But um, he believes that, uh, she believes that, that yeah, we, we are these souls that are lives are cut short. And we have, it's our responsibility to, to express our Judaism as openly as possible and be as comfortable as, it, as we can because, you know, we, our lives are taken short in the previous transmigration, being uh, lost souls from the Holocaust. Um, Rabbi Hood, uh, I hope I'm not bombarding you with questions, never. Um, I thought that to be a rabbi, you did not necessarily have to be ordained, but someone had to confer upon you to tell a rabbi. For example, if I called you rabbi, would you be rabbi? Perhaps it's not entirely true, but I remember hearing it somewhere. But you are a magid. I had to look up the definition in the dictionary. Let me know if I'm wrong and why. Rabbi, in, in terms of this is just strictly an Orthodox Jewish definition, it's someone who is ordained, conferred with the title of, of uh, rabbi. Um, and it's basically, it's an oral examination of, um, of three parts of the Code of Jewish Law uh, with an optional fourth part, but the three parts are uh, the salting of meat. Um, it's just interesting how they chose these. Um, uh, but, uh, milk and meat, the laws of mil separation of milk and meat in cooking. And, um, um, and forbidden mixtures, like if you have a certain forbidden fat and you can't mix it in together, the, the mixture of... Uh, of permitted meat, or also milk and meat, the forbidden mixture, basically. And sometimes there's a fourth part that they do, like Shabbos, the laws of Shabbos, or something like this. But um, when you sit for the test, and it is an open book test, you can uh, read out of the text, and um, they just want to test to see your knowledge, and also you have to have a um, people vouch for your level of God-fearingness. And uh, an Orthodox rabbi is the only one who can ordain you as a rabbi, 
And many people have a tradition that traces them all the way back to the time of Moses, our teacher. This was the first time of ordination. His father-in-law, Yisro, uh, complained to him that you do too much. Your, your, your daily schedule is too much. All these smaller questions that they have about Jewish law they should bring to other people. So at that time, Moses he consulted with God also, and God said it was a good idea. He took 70 elders, and he, he put his hands on their head, and he, he ordained them as being capable of um, answering questions pertaining to Jewish law. So he ordained 70, and those 70 were able to, to um, deal with some of the questions that these 3 million people had in the desert for them. Um, I, 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 my, my channel name is Magid of, uh, of YouTube. Magid just means a preacher. It, it was just kind of a, um, it, it's not a real, it's a joke more than anything. Uh, no one had taken the title. I always liked the title Magid. The, the, the famous Magid that I know was the Magid of Mesrich. But uh, he was a very righteous, um, and in my opinion, perfected human being as much as human beings can be perfected. But uh, just to remember him a little bit. Um, so I think that's it. So that's and 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 uh, that's my understanding of Rabbi. Okay, I hope this helps and uh, God bless.